The WHIPS have agreed that the following matters in report number one will be brought forward. Paragraph 15 on implementing social housing reform. Paragraph 2 on the supporting people review. Paragraph 13 on free schools and academies. And paragraph 19 on council tax benefit. Executive report number one, housing I see, Councillor Ellis. Uh, Madam Mayor, the, the last three or four generations have seen probably the most remarkable change in the way uh, people live uh, the, the, for probably several thousand years. At the, at the turn of the last, at the beginning of the last century, the vast majority of people in this country lived in private rented accommodation. And if we fast forward 50 or 60 years, uh, private rented accommodation had all but disappeared uh, because it had been taken over by the council sector uh, and an increasingly uh, larger uh, private sector that was beginning to, to develop. Uh, in the 1980s and 90s, the right to buy uh, introduced a new generation of people to home ownership, with the result that by the end of last century, the vast majority of the population uh, were living uh, in their own homes. Now we're in the early part of the 21st century, uh, and there are many new challenges that lie ahead. Uh, we're all living longer, for which uh, we have to be grateful. More people are living on their own. There's far greater social, mob social mobility than there was uh, many years ago. And also, of course, the huge increase in house prices in recent years has made it almost impossible for a huge number of people uh, to get on the housing ladder. And that's why this government and this council are looking at ways to give people more choice and more responsibility for the homes they live in. Some of the ideas have already been announced uh, and others are still being looked into. But one thing is clear, we cannot continue to live in the past. The post-war solution to the then housing crisis did work well, but now it doesn't. New solutions new need to be found and discussed. I hope members will find this debate interesting. I move the, the paragraph and there are speakers. Councillor Belton. Well, I'm rather thrown now, Madam Mayor, I have to admit. I um, don't know what to say, uh, which some people might think is a first, but I don't know what to say. I wasn't at the committee. Indeed, uh, our main speaker wasn't at the committee either. Um, and this is a rather complex paper, and I was hoping for some guidance on what to say from the speaker, but he's uh, just some, said something terribly bland and uh, unarguable, and uh, as you know, I like to spark off against the outrageous things said by the majority party, and seeing he didn't say anything, outrageous or not, is rather difficult. Uh, but I have been asked by some people on my side to, oh, I don't know, lay out a little bit of a path, so I will try it. And indeed, Councillor Ellis started by saying how different the world is from a century ago. Uh, he loved that, that Tory phrase about living in the past. I've never actually met anyone living in the past myself, but it seems an extraordinarily difficult thing to do. But there, that's, uh, perhaps we have different perceptions of the future, and that's perhaps what I want to talk about. I think most people on my side, I just wonder whether you're going to be as open-minded, most people on our side would say that you cannot have a completely controlled um, housing operation. Uh, we all accept that, we've always accepted it. No one's ever argued with owner occupation that I am aware of. Um, and I, but I think, in reality, that your side ought to accept that the market cannot serve all our needs all the time. The market weight may work, but it doesn't necessarily produce an optimum solution. Um, one particular example being the market working along the uh, Thames River front over the last 10 years, producing many one and two bedroom flats and virtually no family accommodation at all. I, I seem to recall indeed that when we were talking about a development of 5,000 flats in uh, Nine Elms Lane, uh, it was estimated it would have an impact of three pupils on the primary schools around there. Three or five or ten, it doesn't really matter. It was an insignificant number given the number of flats that we were producing. What I think we managed to achieve immediately after the war, and Councillor Ellis was good enough to uh, uh, point that out, was a radical change in the number of houses with basic facilities, um, a radical change in the housing conditions of many people. 
And indeed, when you get to the 70s, that much maligned Labour Council that did so much to shape what, what this council is about now, we were getting to the stage of re not housing children above the fifth floor. And all our developments were small scale, not the big skyscrapers of the decade before, but they're all small scale and integrated into the community. What we have now with a market-driven solution is the kind of housing that is most particularly obvious in, in Battersea, but is equally so in Putney, perhaps slightly less so in Tooting, of extremely small, extremely expensive properties along the riverfront, um, lots of Victorian terraces for those who are affluent, and actually very few places for the poor, poor to go to. I'm sorry to talk about the poor, those ter dreadful people who come and do all our street cleaning and, and stack our shelves and all the rest of those things they do. But actually, they are left behind. And I see no sign in this paper of you doing anything about that whatsoever. Indeed, you say in the second paragraph of paragraph 15, you're saying it will make it easier for social housing providers to manage the resources better. What happened briefly for a period after the war was council housing became a respectable place for aspiring people to live in. What is beginning to happen is it's becoming a ghetto. And I can only see in your terms, your words, your short fixed term tendencies, a, an attempt, not an attempt, you're not trying to do that, but something which in reality will destroy communities and make them even more ghettos than they currently are. And I'd just like to refer you to um, what uh, Harriet Watt University says about similar, um, similar experimentations in Australia. And there they are shown in three bullet points on the right-hand side of this particular page. Not least, the one that strikes so warmly at your hearts, and that's the creating work disincentives. That, it, that seems to follow from the kind of reforms you're bringing in. I know this is only a very early stage as yet. We're yet to see what it will produce. But I think that we must be very careful that this council isn't continuing further ghettoisation of council estates. Councillor Tom. Uh, Madam Mayor. Um, I wanted particularly in this debate to look at affordable homes because the importance of them is substantial. Both it enables families to stay in the borough and also it is, uh, we can then assist low or little middle income families to get the first rung of the housing ladder. And I might just, if I may, point out what we have done in Wandsworth. Over the last year, we've actually completed 112 units, which includes some 54 from the old... Uh, uh, South Thames College in Putney, some 12 which would be supported by the sanctuary housing for learn those with learning disabilities, and some 46 at St Nicholas Glebe. Looking ahead for next year, there's some 325 houses under construction, some 47, or units I suppose to be precise to suit uh, Councillor Belton, 47 units at Battersea Reach, 18 hidden homes, and indeed you may remember that we took advantage of the Housing Communities Agency's grant to put in 38 in the Rollo estate. And that included some 27 with three bedrooms and some three with four bedrooms, both of which are in huge demand. And looking ahead, we've also got, of course, uh, the uh, affordable homes in terms of the Peabody Regeneration, Vauxhall Nine Elms, uh, the Ram Brewery, all these down the line will provide affor affordable homes. But we're not just talking about the homes themselves, we're talking about imaginative proposals. One of which you're, you're aware of, where we want to uh, offer £50,000 as an interest-free loan for a deposit. And this might come not just from uh, the uh, affordable uh, housing itself, but from off-site uh, contributions. In other words, money put forward by developers rather than put into houses. You may remember the Right to Buy program, hugely successful, and it's good to see it revived again, because that will give us, if we can uh, pressurise government, ensure that we can get the money back from council house sales and therefore continue to locally build. We have rightly prioritised the armed services, and now we are trying to prioritise working families. And I think even Ed Miliband has recognised the merits 
of the strength of community. And I think it's particularly true given recent events. The London Mayor has put forward some four billion pounds. He's achieved this from getting, securing this from the government. Some 1.7 billion is for affordable homes. And the plan is over the next four years, we should build something like 53,000 houses by 2015. And indeed, when one terms uh, talks about market rents, you may recall the 80% limit, we may have to bring that down to 65% for London because of the importance and uh, the cost of living in London. But what I do want to emphasize <laughs> is that we've had enough of the Bob Crows of this world. Some of you may recall that Mr. Crow sits in a sound council flat, a subsidized council flat, with an income of £145,000 a year. Can you think of any more <laughs> breathtaking contempt for real need? And indeed, I suspect he actually believes in the old socialist maxim, which actually goes very well to a tune of the red flag, something like, the working class can kiss me, I've got the form of job at last. So, Grant Shapps has taken a, 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 a scythe or a, a, a cutlass to this, and we'll end this uh, socialist nirvana. We'll see some 6,000 people who live in council flats with over 100,000 a year. They will be forced very shortly to be paying market value. We have, uh, Madam Mayor, an affordable homes event uh, tomorrow in the Civic Suite, and I shall certainly encourage both councillors and indeed those interested to attend this. So may I say that I believe our policies are effective, imaginative and progressive. I urge you to support them. Councillor Hogg. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I'd like to talk about uh, some of the personal effects in Wandsworth today of the historical forces which uh, Councillor Belton and Councillor Ellis um, have sketched out. Um, and I hope to emphasise that whether you own a home or whether you're in social housing or if you rent from someone else, um, there, there are many, many understandable reasons why you can be anxious about the roof over your head. Um, I'd like to start with people who rent from private landlords because we seem to talk about them the least. Um, and we should remember, I suppose, our responsibility to young people around the country because here in London we have, you know, the media, uh, the centre of finance, of politics, of so much else. Um, and I, I'm aware that I'm the only person from my secondary school class in Birmingham doing a professional job in London, and these sort of ever-increasing private rents are actually deferring and denying people's ambitions from elsewhere in the country. Um, on social housing, we'll all have lots and lots of um, examples. I'll only go for one. It was the first bit of uh, council casework I got last year. Um, Chris Richards lives um, on the Winstanley Estate in Latchmere, um, in a studio flat, not even a one-bedroom flat, with his wife and two young children. Um, and I found out yesterday he's still waiting for a transfer. Um, he's an ambulance driver, he's an active member of the local community, and he plays by the rules, and we've let him down. Um, in incidentally, mentioning the affordable homes um, event, which I think is an excellent initiative, but someone I spoke to today who said they wanted to go to it said it was only on during working hours tomorrow. Is that true, or is it open in the evening? seems an oversight if it's not open to working people, if you see what I mean. Um, on to owner-occupiers. I mean, the, the question is, and I think this has been touched on, um, who can afford to live in Wandsworth today? Um, I, I, just as a case study, I'd like to look at one group of people. Um, they're hardly key workers, but they do do unpleasant tasks in precarious jobs. Um, it's the Conservative cabinet members here in Wandsworth. Um, let, let's pick four out at random. Um, and ask them to leave their houses and to try to repurchase them at current market prices. So uh, we may have to sort of greet them in the, the members' room since they're not all here, but um, if we start with Councillor Madden, who declares a flat in uh, Weimar Street in Putney, and estate agents tell me a similar flat would cost about £340,000 today and would require mortgage repayments of about £24,000 a year, and for a family on the average salary in Wandsworth, um, after those mortgage repayments and other unavoidable taxes would leave them £128 a year for all other living expenses. And this flat isn't even close to the Wandsworth average, which is a shade above half a million pounds for a property. So we'll move on to Councillor Cousins, also absent, um, of Ellsley Road on the Shaftesbury Estate. And estimates are around £600,000 for a family home there. 
which would involve a mortgage of something around £40,000. Now, to be clear, I'm not viewing anyone who takes on that burden as filthy rich and we can impose more taxes on them. My point is that they are a family absolutely stretched to the limit and every bit as anxious about their finances as you or me or people in other sectors of housing. Councillor Senior of Gowrie Road, Battersea, I mean, estimates for a three-bedroom house in this area is around £800,000. So <laughs> apologies for being vulgar, this, but this is a mortgage of uh, £55,000, £60,000. I mean, wh who can afford this today? Um, and finally, Councillor Ellis has property um, in excess of £100 million. Pounds. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, he gave the town hall as his correspondence address. That's, uh, that's my mistake. Um, so, so I'll finish up with a couple of questions. Um, <laughs> I mean, I guess the, the question to the Cabinet members is who, if they lived your lives and, and did your voluntary work and so on, arriving in Wandsworth today, would they stand a chance of being where you are now? Um, is the ladder still there? How do low-waged workers get onto the first rung? How can the council make new developments work for existing residents rather than large property developers? And indeed, is it even possible to bring up a family of three or four children in Wandsworth today? So I hope Councillor Carpenter will explain more of the finances of the situation and Councillor Cooper the, the politics, um, and we'll continue this absorbing debate. Thanks.